I'm going to do three and four from the physics G mock final. These are both um, dynamics problems. So we're going to use uh, F equals MA. We're going to use that weight is M times G, that the force of friction is mu times M times G. And then if there's more than one force acting on some object, then we've got to add those forces intelligently. Right? Kind of a thing. Right, so number four has a dog. Oh, I, why am I starting with three? Let's start with number three. I'm so eager to get to the dog part of this, but let's, let's start with the stage set. So 820 kilogram stage set rests on air bearings. It's floating on air, it's frictionless, right? A person pushes on it with a force of 65 newtons for 50 seconds. Yeah? Right, and um, this thing is 820 kilograms. Right now, how could they how could they increase the acceleration of the stage set? What could you change? What two things could you change? How would you change them to increase, lower the mass that you're pushing on, or increase the force, or you know other things like if there is a friction force, get rid of the friction force. Right? How about the time? If I push longer, is it a bigger acceleration? No, it's a bigger change in velocity. It's not a bigger acceleration, correct? Because acceleration is just the rate at which you change your velocity. Now, if there isn't any friction force, then you can just simply use F equals MA, just as it is, and there's no, I don't have to go 65 minus a friction force because there isn't one, right? So the acceleration is 65 is 820 times the acceleration, and then we can figure out the acceleration. So uh, 65 divided by 820 gives a whopping acceleration of 0.07926. I'm going to store this somewhat unimaginatively in the variable A, meters per second squared, right? And then it doesn't ask for the acceleration. What does it say? What is, what's the final velocity, right? So I'm going to use, heaven forbid, another formula from the other chapter. Vf is Vi plus At. So if the initial velocity is zero, we go 0 plus 0 0.079268, etc., right, times the 5 zero seconds, right? So I'm going to multiply this by 50 and hopefully get 3.96, and I did. Meters per second is the final velocity, right? And then the next question, and somehow I went wrong. Actually, you know what I did on the next question to get the wrong answer? was I looked at 50 and thought that was the force, right? But it's 65 newtons, and then there's a, a friction force of 20 newtons, right? So our force diagram looks like this, 65 this way, 20 newtons this way. Is that what it says, 20 newtons? I don't want to get it wrong twice, that'd be sad. Yeah, 20 newtons, there we go, right? And when, what do you do with that? Yeah, subtract them, right? So this guy's positive, this guy's negative. And then you say 65 minus 20 is 820A, right? Ta-da. You got to put those little angle brackets around it, too. So that ends up being 45 divided by 820. And that is the correct answer, 0 0.05487 meters per second squared. Not the answer that's, in, that's on the sheet. For the record, Natalie got that one right. But then I changed the problem because, anyway, yeah. And then I got it wrong, so. That's at least a little bit sad for me. Um, and then, Do you need to be someone's assistant next year? Do you need to be someone's assistant next year? She's like, yeah, no. <laughs> All right, number four. Uh, see a dog sled. The key here is to draw a really good dog sled. There's just stuff on the dog sled. 
Right. Isn't there like a tall thing like that, right? It's like dog. I really don't. I'm sort of vague on what yeah. that, you know. I mean, we just have not so many dogs, apparently, because I'm, I'm getting bored of that. Okay, and then the, the, it's 155 kilograms. And then the coefficient, the static coefficient that we will never use, but I think on the test I say, what force do you need to get the thing going, right? What does it say? Dogs pulling. What force to start it going? What force to keep it going? What's the acceleration if some force is applied? A force for a certain acceleration, right? I just put these on there because they're the hardest ones. But there are some really, like, what's the weight of the sled? Well, the weight of the sled is 155 times 9.8, yeah, right? Uh, force to start it going, force to keep it going. You would use the coefficients of friction. So the static one is um, 0.23. And then the kinetic one that we're going to use in this thing is 0.13. Is that right? Yeah, there we go. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out the um, force of friction. Right. You're also going to use weight is m times g. Right. The force of friction that we care about, I'm going to use this coefficient because in both cases the sled's already moving. So this is the one to keep it moving. This is the one to just you use in the formula to see whether it will start moving. So it's mu times m times g. So the force of friction is 0 0.13 times 155 kilograms times 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So 0 0.13 times 155 times 9.8 is, and I'm going to store this, actually I don't need to store it, it comes out even. It is 197.47. I can just write that down. Okay, force of friction. And then the first question says, and one of the questions is that, what force do you need to keep it moving? That force would keep it moving. If we used instead of this coefficient, this one, that would be the force you need to get it started, right? And then what is the weight? The weight is just going to be the mass times gravity. They're so easy. I don't want you to miss them. If you do that page, that'd be sad, wouldn't it? You get the hard ones, but you miss the easy ones, right? Okay, so if you exert 410 newtons in the direction that it's sliding, 410 newtons in the direction that it's sliding, that's this force, right? Is that the only force acting on it? Yeah, to approximately 30% of you, it will, and then you'll get it wrong, right? <laughs> okay. No, no, because remember, you just calculated a friction force, right? And that friction force was intended to, like, be forever, you know, kind of a thing. Right, so there is, yeah, if it's sliding this way, if the thing's moving this way, then there is a friction force of 197.47 this way. How do we deal with that? That guy's positive, this guy's negative, right? So the acceleration is um, 410 minus 197.47, right? So that way's that way, this guy's negative because it's the other way, right? And then that equals 155 times A. 410, wait, I'm going to store that number because I'm way too lazy. I'm way too lazy to um, write that number down, right? Okay, so 410 minus, the force divided by 155, 1.37, right? So don't forget, don't forget though when you're doing that, right? And then the next question is, what force, let's make this an unknown force. So this is part A. This is 4A, right? 4B says, what force would you have to exert to make it accelerate at some rate, right? So we want to, it to accelerate at, at 4.5 meters per second squared. That's not fast enough for us, right? Okay, so now this becomes the variable, right? And we want the acceleration to be 4.5, and this is part B. Right? Well, to make it 4.5, we go, we go some force minus 197.47 equals 155, and then the acceleration is 
Yeah. 